This is a video about how I was in a relationship with a woman, my journey of how I got into it and how I got out of it. Honestly, this video is long overdue. Holy Spirit prompted me some time ago to do this video and I was procrastinating. I have delayed and honestly, I was just being disobedient. And so the time is now. I'm Mary Catherine and welcome to my channel. I want to backtrack a little bit just to give some context about how I got to this point. As a teenager, I was angry. I was rebellious. I was sexually active. I was promiscuous. And I actually wrote about that journey here in my book, From Trash to Treasure, He Saved My Life. This is my first book and this is a plug because it will give you a lot of context into who I am today. This is part one of the journey. After being that way and living that angry lifestyle, December of 2011 at a watch night service, I was tired and I was like, Lord, I want to live for you. So I rededicated my life back to the Lord and I committed to being all in. I was 16 years old and with that came the commitment to being abstinent. I vowed to save myself until I got married. And so out of that birth, a ministry um, celebrations, events, traveling, speaking engagements. Um, I was loud about my journey in just trying to get to the altar and just my journey as a young teenage Christian, because where I lived in Goldsboro, North Carolina, everybody knew me when I was like turning up on the bad side. And so everybody knew when I get, had given my life to the Lord. So fast forward to February, 2016, after just feeling honestly tired of waiting, desiring a man, desiring to get married and just feeling lonely and just left out and all the things I one night decided to watch porn and masturbate. Now, previously, I had never had an interest in doing so because I just didn't need to. I was sexually active and I just never really understood how or the purpose until I understood it. And so I was like, oh, I could do this without doing that. It was a door that was open to lust and perversion. And I would dibble and dabble with it on and off. Same year, in August of 2016, we left North Carolina and we moved to Mississippi. And here, I didn't really know anybody. Um, if You only knew my story if you follow me on social media. And I didn't really connect with a lot of people. And the journey of just having to be this youth leader, this example, be abstinent on a public scale, like that. It was over. The, 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 the weight had been lifted. During that same time, I was also struggling with my relationship with the Lord as it pertained to reading the Bible. Um, I started to be confused about the word of God and how I studied and interpreted. It. And um, that's a whole other story for another day. It's 2016 and, and we just continued throughout the years that I'm drifting kind of further and further from the word. And you need the word of God. You cannot live your life as a believer without God's word. There is a reason that he has given it to us. It is, it has everything we need pertaining to life and godliness. Fast forward to 2018. I had met this guy and honestly, we were literally cool. Um, we weren't on that. We weren't talking in a romantic way. We weren't liking each other. That was literally and genuinely my homeboy. So I went to his house one day to chill and the vibes were vibing. Okay. I wasn't stupid. I felt there was something in the atmosphere. And so although we didn't do anything that night sexually, I went back over there because I enjoyed what was there. It was this false sense of intimacy. Lust is loud. Okay. The spirit of lust is loud. You cannot be dealing with lust and it's not going to be screaming at you and your body not going to be talking to you and all the things. And that's what happened. So in July of 2018, I had sex, throwing my six year journey out the window. And I was devastated. But the first thing I thought about was what would people say? That's when I realized there was a problem and where it lied. My big sister was like, you are so worried about what people are going to say and think. What is God going to say and think? 
And I realized that I had put myself on a pedestal. I had valued people's opinions and their thoughts over God. And it was an idol. And I also realized that my journey of abstinence was an idol because I started to just do it because I wanted to get married. It was not because, no, you need to be holy and you need to keep yourself in sex before marriage is a sin. It's not that. It was that, oh, I want to wait till I get married because I want a husband. I want a husband. I want a husband. Summer of 2018, I was not absent. And I felt like, oh, shoot, I done had sex. I might as well turn up then. The problem. Because what was I really doing it for? Was I not doing it for the glory of God? Was I not doing it because he said my body is a temple? Was I not doing it because I knew I wasn't married and this is just required of me? My motives was wrong. So I encourage you to check your motives for why you're even doing the thing. If God is not at the forefront of why you're even doing something, your heart is not right towards the matter. August 2018, I moved on to campus. I went to the Jackson State University and I became an RA. I was away from home. I was ready to get the full HBCU college experience and I was down for whatever. All right. And I remember one time I was thinking, I wonder what it's like to be with a girl. Now, mind you, I knew this was the enemy. I knew this was the enemy. Because if you know me, like deep down, I like men. I don't, nah, uh, uh, I want a husband. I want a man. Like I wasn't with all that. But there were seeds that had been planted even at a young age that I realized later contributed to this even point of where I was. So September of 2018, I met this girl. She came into my residence hall where I was an RA at. I didn't know her. But if you know me, I have a natural drawing personality that sometimes it'll feel like I'm flirting with you, but I'm really not. My personality really is just cool. Like, I'm just humbly saying that. Sometimes I do be flirting, but most times I'm really just being myself and it's just a drawing personality. She was the same way. And I remember she kept coming into my building until one day she came in there and was like, Mary, I heard you like girls. And I was like, Who? Don't nobody know me around here, so I don't know who told you that. They told you a lie. And it's crazy how the enemy is sneaky. Like, he is roaring like a lion, seeking who he may devour, all right? And he, like, used that and twisted it. I found out later she got had the wrong Mary. Nobody told her that. Like, well, somebody told her that, but it was about a different Mary. It wasn't even about me. But that was an opportunity because I had started to be attracted to this girl. I ended up telling her one day, like, look, I don't like girls, but I cannot lie. I'm attracted to you. And there the journey began. Um, we started spending time together. She started spending the night in my dorm. We started trying things that were not pleasing and glorifying to God. And I entered into a relationship with her and she became my girlfriend. Before I even enter into that relationship, the Lord warned me. and He said, if you get into this, this is going to be the hardest thing you get out of. He was telling me not to do this. I disobeyed and I did it anyway. I just felt like ah, I'll deal with the consequences later. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is very much weak. And so that is why I just was like, I don't even care. Like, I want to do this. I'm going to try this. Like, I'm interested. I remember October 2018, I got into a car accident that I thought that I was turning toward the direction of home, but I actually was going the wrong way. And I remember Holy Spirit telling me, this is where you are headed. If you do not come back to me, you are headed towards destruction. And I remember getting that warning. I was so sad. I was so devastated, but not sad and devastated enough because I kept going into the relationship and the lifestyle of sin. The relationship was very toxic. Even though there were moments where I felt that she treated me so right, I felt that she filled this void of intimacy that I so desired and it made me feel like I had everything I needed. It was not what God had wanted for me. There is a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is destruction. And that's what it was. Also, there are times where like sin will be enticing. It will feel like it's the right thing to do. And honestly speaking, if the Lord wanted same sex genders to be together, he would have created that in the very beginning of the world. He created man and a woman. He did not create man and man. He did not create woman and woman. And so the lies that you were born this way, the lies that you feel that you are 
um, supposed to be with the same sex. No, that's not God. That's not who he is. And it's not an alignment with his word. That is just a false feeling, false sense. But I understand where you are because I had ended up being there. I felt like this relationship is for me. Like I felt like I did not want to get out of it. It was an idol. And so fast forward to May of 2019, I was sick. And if you know, we don't even believe in sickness in my family. My, my mom and dad, we did not grow up being sick. We didn't even call it sickness. We would say we're challenged because we just didn't even claim that. But this time, I really felt like I had that virus before it was a real thing, okay? I, it was crazy. I thought the Lord was getting me out of here. I thought I was being punished. I was like, I'm dying and I'm going to hell. Like, seriously, I was scared. But that is not how the Lord is. Now, the Bible does say that the wages of sin are death, but the way in which I thought I was being treated is not in God's character. I remember laying there and she was laying next to me and I just looked over and I said, I got to break up with you. I cannot do this. I feel that I am headed towards a way that is not right. I cannot do this anymore. I was so sick. I was afraid. Broke up with her, graduated college, and a few weeks later, we ended up back together. One thing about us, we will beg God for mercy and grace and as soon as we good and out of that situation, we go back to the very thing that had us um, abusing grace and mercy in the first place. And that's not right. So don't do that. Time continues. Summer has passed. It's the fall of 2019. We're still together. Um, and it was just toxic. I knew that the Lord was calling me out of it. I was very much convicted from being in a relationship. I did not have no peace. I did not have no rest. I knew that what I was doing was wrong. I knew how I was raised and I knew what the Bible said about this. But I chose myself over God and I chose her over God. We're now at winter break and she had to stay with me um, for whatever reason. And at the time, my dad had this other house that he managed and he let her stay. One thing I appreciate about my parents is that even though they did not agree with my behavior and they didn't want me with a woman, they did not mistreat me. They didn't write me off and they didn't mistreat her whenever they did come into contact with her, which was only a few times. So he allowed her to stay in that house so she would not have to go all the way back home. That did not come without something. He said, I want to sit down and have a talk with y'all. That day he had a talk with us and he was basically saying how there's a call on my life. He feels like me being in this relationship with her was a phase and he was feeling like he was telling her that like, He's a believer as a believer. He doesn't agree, but he loves her. And he was talking about how even his flesh wants, his flesh wants him to hate her, but he doesn't. And she took that and ran with it as, your dad hate me. Like, that's not what he said. Um, what he said was, he loves you even though his flesh doesn't want him to. But you know, when you are not following God, you hear what you want to hear. So after that conversation, she was very much convicted and she was like, I can't do this no more. Like we can't do this. So we broke up. And after we broke up, we stayed in communication because she was like, I want you back. I shouldn't have broke up with you. It was just up and down a roller coaster ride. I remember she came back after Christmas break. She moved back on campus and we were trying to make it work. Let me go back just a little bit. In December, that same year of 2019, was seven years after my first time of encountering God in that way. I was like, God, I can't do this no more. I really want to get right. I want to do better. And just like any journey of just being with Christ, it's not an overnight thing. I committed to getting better. January 2020 came and we were still trying to make things work and it just was not it. I had really resolved in my heart that this is not the lifestyle that I want to live and that I did not want to remain in a relationship with a woman. Now, did it end easy? No. Just like the Lord warned me, it was one of the hardest situations I had to get out of. I was very emotional. I, my, my, my soul was craving sin. I wanted her. I felt like I would never find anything like that. And it was indeed hard. There would be times where we stopped talking for months because she actually had very quickly entered into a relationship with another person. It was crazy. It was just a mess. It was not godly. It was sin. So that's what comes with that lifestyle. 
we would go like months without talking to one another. And then she would come back and hit me up and I would give in and I would let her back in, just keeping the door open. Now we weren't like engaging romantically, but you could just tell that that connection that we had formed was still very much there. And so she would contact me if she was having a, um, issue with this girl. I would just be willing, having conversations with her. Um, I had moved to Dallas by then and we would communicate. The door was just kept open. And I just started even being convicted by that because it was like, what is the purpose of me keeping this door open? Like, imagine me, you know, one day getting into a relationship with my husband. He's like, who is this girl? And I have no valid reason of keeping this relationship going. Oh, no, it's just some girl I used to go with. Like, be for real, Mary. Like, be so for real. So I started getting really convicted about closing that door for good. In July of 2022, I was tired. I was just tired of that up and down. My flesh was still very much drawn to that relationship. And I could feel how I was just hanging on to it emotionally and the same for her. And that was not God. And so I, I had to close that door for good. And so July, 2022 was the last time I had ever spoken to her for good. Fast forward to actually a couple of months ago, I started having dreams about her. And in those dreams, it was like, I was still in that relationship. She was coming back around. It felt like those feelings that I had years ago. And I did not like that. All right. I was mad. I was like, Rook, Robo, I come out of agreement. Like I was mad. I was like, God, this door is closed. I'm not doing this. Anything in my heart, anything I remove it. I come out of agreement with baby. I was praying because I was not about to go backward. No, you, uh, 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 uh. and then I realized it was a warning because she was about to come back around. And sure enough, a few weeks ago, I received a DM on Instagram. It was just like, hey, I saw this video of you. I had to come and say, hey, I hope you're well, yada, yada, yada. I was so annoyed. Me as a person, I'm genuine. And I, I wanted to respond because there's no beef. And like, you know, we was cool or whatever at one point in life. And my nature really isn't just to ignore you. But I knew that I had to guard my heart. I had to guard my heart with this one. And I was like, I have come too far. I have closed this door and there is no way I'm opening back up. So I kindly just blocked her. I did not respond and I kept that door closed. One thing about the enemy, he comes to steal, kill and destroy. And any way he can do it, he's going to try. My encouragement for you is that the Lord wants you back. He has never left you or forsaken you. And he wants you to come back to him. He wants your life. That lifestyle is not for you. It is not his desire that you continue to engage in same-sex relationships. I know it feels good. I know it feels like that person loves you. I know it feels like this is where you're most comfortable, where you're most yourself. I know it feels like this is for you, but it is not. If the Lord wanted you to be with somebody of the same sex, he would have created it that way in the Bible. This video not even about that though. This video really is just about your relationship with him. Don't leave that relationship hoping to find a void and another relationship heterosexually. Don't do that. Leave because it is what God wants for you. Leave because your life is more important. Leave because your life with Christ is more important. Leave because he wants you to himself. The wages of sin are truly death. We don't know when our time has come and will come and we do not want to die in our sin. That's what I had to learn. I pray that my testimony of how I overcame will encourage you. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. And so that is why I share with you today. If you feel like this video was very encouraging to you and you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Even leave a comment below if you want to. If you feel that there is somebody that would be encouraged and benefit from watching this video, please do not be selfish and share the link with them so that they can get what they need. If you feel like you enjoy me and you might enjoy my personality, subscribe, like stay around. Like we are going on a journey. All right. Connect with me on social media. I want to talk with you. I want to hear from you. And until next time, I will see you later. Bye.